So in this video, I want to talk about Axie write bursts. We've already talked about read bursts, and the set of ports that are used for write bursts is actually really similar. But before going into that, I just want to remind us about the basic idea of Axie. So if you remember from the first videos, we talked about a standard SRAM interface that doesn't use Axie, where you've got a read address and a read data coming out for reads, and then you set a write address and a write data and a write valid when you want to write, and eventually the write gets committed. Axie writes are conceptually very similar to this, but there's an extra detail to each write. Well, two. One is that writes can fail, and the other is that writes are strobed. So in Axie, you'll have this extra port going in called the write strobe, and the write strobe basically says which bytes of the data do you actually want to set, and it's really just for allowing um, transactions, write transactions that are smaller than the width of the data bus. So. If you think about a strobed write, the way this works is suppose we've got a memory where in address 2, it's all zeros. And then we write this value that's, you know, FFFFF in hex to address 2. But we're going to write it with the strobe, the binary strobe, 1010. What this strobe means is we're only going to actually write these two bytes out of the four that were put in in the write. And for example, if we change the strobe to be all ones, then we're going to write the entire thing in address 2 instead of just um, alternating bits or alternating bytes. So Axie supports strobed writes, and that's really the main difference in the kind of data that you put in to do a write. So just as a reminder from the first video, there's actually three separate groups of ports that are used in writes. There's ports that are used to communicate the write address information. There's ports to send in the write data information, and then there's ports that send write responses, which indicate whether each write failed or succeeded. So again, Axie is burst-based, so we're not just going to put in one address at a time, just like for reads. We're going to put in a start address, a number of writes, a number of bytes per write, and a burst type. And then we're going to put in chunks of data to write with their strobes. And then we're going to get out information about whether the writes failed. So just to give ourselves some more space in this uh, picture to write some ports, let's split these port groups up. So the write address actually looks really similar to the read address fields from the previous videos about read bursts. Now, everything in the write address channel is going to have the prefix aw for address write, I assume. So we're going to send in a field which is going to have the burst types, just like in a read burst, a start address, a start length, which is, or a, a address length, or AWLN, which indicates the number of transfers in the burst, an AWS size field, which indicates the number of bytes per transfer, and then the ready and valid control signals. So really extremely similar to, um, uh, you know, a read burst. Then on the data side, we're going to send in the right data. We're going to send in a strobe, and the strobe is going to have one bit for each byte in the W data field. So if it's a four byte thing in the W data, the strobe field is going to be four bits. And then we're going to have last, which indicates whether this is the last write in a burst, or the last piece of data in the write burst, and then ready and valid control signals as usual. And then for the write response, we're going to have, and the prefix is B, I don't know why they chose that, um, we're going to have the response coming out, and then we're going to have ready and valid control signals. And notice that because the memory is producing the response, the valid comes out of the memory instead of going into it like it does for the address and data channels. Um, and then we're going to, of course, have readies and valids to control. And so really, um, writes are extremely similar to read bursts. It's <coughs> We're going to put in the information to describe the burst we want to do. Then we're going to send in the data that we actually want to write. And we're going to get out responses that describe whether writes succeeded or failed. So that's the basic idea of an Axie write burst. These are the ports that are involved. And there are some others that you'll see that are less likely to be implemented, like user, cache, quality of service, region, things like that. Um, those are really extra detail fields that aren't part of the core of Axie. So these are the really important ports to understand for Axie write burst data transfers. And next time, we'll cover some more details and uh, look at a write burst timing diagram in more detail to help you understand. So see you next video.